This video presents our arthroscopic diagnosis and repair technique in cases of isolated meniscal tibial ligament tears. This simple procedure provides an accurate diagnosis of the meniscal tibial lesions and allows for repair with an all-inside suture device without the drawbacks of a posterior medial approach. We perform all the procedures with a classic 30-degree arthroscope. The medial compartment examination and the diagnosis of a posterior peripheral lesion are conducted as follows in three steps. Step 1. Standard anterior arthroscopic exploration. In valgus position, we start to inspect the medial joint line through a standard anterolateral approach. We evaluate the compartment gap with the probe tip as reference, and we test the stability of the posterior segment with a hook probe. An excessive mobility suggests a peripheral lesion. Give careful attention if the inferior facet of the meniscus can be reversed when pulling on it. Step 2. Posterior medial exploration through the notch view. Then the arthroscope is advanced through the antecondylar notch along the medial femoral condyle under the posterior crochet ligament. The knee is now flexed to a 90 degree position. When inserting the arthroscope was difficult, we use a blunt trocart to prevent any damages to the optic. A needle is inserted into the posterior medial compartment to unfold the synovial membrane and thus to define the lesion. This allows to ensure the integrity of the meniscal capsular tissues. The meniscal capsular ligament is still attached to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Step 3. Medial collateral ligament release. At last, we return to the anterior part of the knee to perform the medial collateral ligament release. We provide a valgus force with the knee flexed to 20 degrees to stretch the MCL fibers. We locate the medial joint line with an 18-gauge needle, which is introduced in the posterior third of the joint line under the medial meniscus. The needle is removed in position one centimeter distal to the joint line in the MCL fibers, ensuring an unimpeded course of the syphineous nerve and vein with transient elimination. While maintaining the valgus stress, percutaneous punctures are progressively performed with an anteposterior saw in motion. At the same time, we control the opening of the joint space with the arthroscope. The release of the ligament is stopped when the posterior part of the medial meniscus is in full view and instruments can easily pass through without damaging the cartilage. The meniscal tibial ligament tear is clearly exposed when approaching the optic towards the posterior part under the meniscus. Meniscal repair. For the suture, we keep the same bogus position. A meniscal rest is used to abrade both sides of the tear to stimulate a healing response. Before introducing the repair device, we curve the flexible needle. With a slide cannula to protect the cartilage, the device is advanced under the meniscus close to the meniscal tibial ligament tear. We insert the first implant obliquely with the needle looking upwards in the peripheral third of the meniscus and we fix it behind on the meniscal capsular tissue. The second implant is introduced under the meniscus too, but the needle is curved downwards and directly inserted into the meniscal tibial ligament. The sliding knot is gradually tightened, closing the tear with the knot pusher or the hook probe. We repeat the same suture as many times as necessary. we achieve secure fixation of the posterior peripheral meniscus at its original attachment. Therefore, the inferior facet of the meniscus can no longer be reversed. As well, there is no noticeable cartilage damage after the repair procedure. 